let us talk about items. Now, I want to create a whole series of how to paint inside of uh, Substance Painter and Mari. Now, before I do that, uh, I will be painting on this model here. I have to set it up for items. Now, if you look over to the left here in the, inside the UV view, right, you'll notice that all these objects, I mean, if I click on one, two, three, and so on and so on, all of them go within the space from zero to one. And this is bad. Now, the reason why this is bad is because this is going to force me to make sure that I'm going to need a shader per object. And this is not what I want. I want to have a single shader for this entire asset, apply it to this entire asset, and have all the textures apply accordingly. Now, in order for that to work, I need to make sure that all the textures have their own unique um, texture space. So this is what we're going to be doing in this video. Before we go into uh, you working through the entire drone asset, I thought it would be a good idea to take some time out and actually explore why it is a good idea to actually UDIM your model on a much simpler example. So in this case, I have a sphere and a cube. Sphere and cube. Now, both these assets have UVs, and they are all sitting within the 0 to 1 space, or UDIM 1001. So we here we have these two assets. Now, I'm not really, I don't have to do anything anymore with this asset here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to save them and import them into Painter. Let us go ahead and save this model. So I'm going to do it this way. Right click on the Untitled here, go to Save As. In my case, I'm going to type in my path. And I'm going to save my model as an FBX. OK, so FBX, here we come. Example. Yeah, that's fine. All right, awesome. Now let us head into Painter. And here we are within Painter. So the first thing you want to do is go into New, start a new project, right? Right now for Mesh, we have nothing selected. So let's find that Mesh that we uh, just saved, or that example file. And in this case, Painter supports OBJ, 3DS, PRJ, and a whole list of formats. In our case, we have FBX. So let us open it. OK, now, do you want to create a texture per UDIM tile? And in this case, it's checked by default, or at least it is in my case. And we didn't actually set it up with that in mind, so I do not want that, right? Um, I want to show how not using UDIMs uh, will fail. So uh, template, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, you know, it honestly, it doesn't matter. But let's just go to PBR Metal Rough HQ, that's fine, and hit OK. So now we have our cube and our sphere. And as you can see on the left side here, on the texture set list, we have one, which is basically the name of our shader. If I go back to Modo, and I go into the shading tab, you'll notice that my, I, well, I should have had a default shader. In any case, in my case, I guess I don't. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is that as I'm painting on this object, it's painting also on the cube. Now, why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because they have overlapping UVs, right? And this is bad. Now, I could have done it, uh, set up this project in a way where I could have had one object have one shader and then another object have one shader, but now I have two shaders to deal with, right? And I will get te uh, like textures dedicated to the cube, so the I would have essentially, um, if I have um, an object uh, like this, right, the cube, I would have a cube texture set Right? And then I would have a sphere texture set. So now I have two texture sets to worry about. And I have to have two shaders and apply the textures to both the cube and both the sphere. It's not a problem in this case. right? There's only two objects. But when you have thousands of objects on a much larger asset, like let's just say you're working on a big, massive uh, battleship right? or some kind of really complex robot, well, that's when it's going to become extremely time-consuming. You're going to have to deal with a lot of uh, object names, right? Um, a lot of texture uh, names. You're going to have to go th through the list um, or create some kind of script to automate uh, the process of applying uh, textures to objects because no such thing exists by default, right? You're going to have to um, create tons of shaders and just deal with the whole mess. Not fun. So 
in order to simplify this whole thing, what we are going to do is we're going to create, a, uh, we're going to move one of these UVs, right, either the sphere or the cube, to the UDIM 1002, and then what will happen is, well, you will see. Okay, back inside of Modo. So, in my case now, what I want to do is, very simply, move some of these UVs over. So I'm going to move it over by one. Now I could move it over this way, right? But the problem is it's going to be if I'm not accurate enough and any one of these UVs goes over that space, it now is going to cause me problems. So in my case, whenever you move things, make sure that you you go down into the transform tab here and move by a full integer, right? That means one or two or three. Make sure there's absolutely no points in there. Right? Now I moved it by one. Perfect. Awesome. And you know what, it's usually a pretty good idea to shrink these just a t tiny bit so that they don't take up the like the full space of um, uh, what, what do you call it? the entire tile because sometimes you might want to bleed the uh, borders, uh, especially when you're doing any kind of projection painting, and now you have some space for that bleed to happen um, around the border of the actual UDIM. So I'm going to also go into the sphere object and shrink it just a tad, right? Very, very little. If you want it to be a little bit more accurate, go into the transform tab again, uh, click on this icon over here, the O, make sure it's equal, and now press control, and when you go on this, uh, these little arrows, you can have much more accurate uh, feedback or control over how much you scale or transform or do whatever you want. So let me go back into the cube. And again, go to scale, click on here, and scale it up until it's very close to the border. All right, good enough. Once again, let me save this example. So this one's going to be example UDIM. Okay, awesome. And let me go back into Painter. And in my case, I'm going to start a new project. So I'm going to discard that one. Select my new mesh, and this one's going to be example UDIM. Okay, everything else stays the same. And once again, we have a cube and a sphere, right? Uh-oh, wait a minute, we still have only one shader. This is bad. When I paint on here, I once again get this. Well, let me restart that. And the one mistake I made is I didn't tell Painter to create a texture per UDIM tile. So let me select that. Once again, go to example UDIM, right? And now when I click OK, I should get 101, 1002. So I can now hide one of these objects, right? So I have the option to do that. And now if I texture this object here, you'll notice that this one is not textured. I can do the same thing here. Nah, 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 nah. And this one's not textured. Awesome. This is exactly what I want. So now if I go ahead and save this, save all these textures, and bring them into Modo, I can import them as a UV sequence, or UDIM sequence, and I'm going to get exactly what I have here. So you know what, just for uh, shits and giggles, I'm going to create some smart materials, or at least, you know what, let me bake out some information here. I will go into the big textures, very quickly, create all those maps, so I'll create all texture sets, so it's going to go through all these objects and bake out some maps. I will assign some of these uh, materials onto these uh, objects, and then what's going to happen is I'm going to just go ahead and export, import it into Modo, and render away. Okay, so baking of the files is done, as you can see here, for both objects. Awesome. Now, th these maps are actually used to pipe into, or rather, these textures here, the smart materials, utilize these maps for different effects. So, you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to apply now some materials to these objects. Okay. And so we have the red, and I'm going to, for the other object, choose a different material altogether. Maybe this one here. Hello. There you go. Am I going to get a result? Anytime now. Okay. So we have two different results. Now let me go ahead and uh, export these textures. 
and go over into Modo. All right, so let me export these textures. Go to File, Export Textures. And in here, for now, I'm just going to go to V-Ray Udem. Okay. And there's really nothing else that you need to do except uh, you or rather point to the directory where you want to save to and go to export. So in my case, I'm just going to hit export. It should export relatively quickly. Okay. And go to OK. And now switch back to Modo. Okay, so let's start from scratch. So we have my two objects here, right? And I'm actually going to turn off the uh, render view. And inside here, once you have your uh, material and so select this uh, shader, go to add layer, image map, load items, and go inside the folder where the, your textures exist. Okay, now in my case, I'm going to have to select both the diffuse, right? So example, you done diffuse and da 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 diffuse. Then there's 101, 1002. Select both textures and click open. Okay. And as you can see, I've just applied colors to both objects.